and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. This is part of my laboratory success series and we're going to talk about how you use a standard curve to find the concentration of materials in an unknown sample. We're going to do it Penguin Prof style, of course. And if you would take a second and show your support by clicking those buttons, I would really appreciate it. Thanks. You want to stay tuned to answer these questions. How do you find out how much stuff you have in your sample? What is a standard curve? How do you use the standard curve? And we're going to look at, as an example, finding the concentration of protein in an unknown sample. So how you measure anything, you, basically you're taking a series of things whose values you know and comparing them to the thing with the value that you want to know. I know that sounds strange, but it is very confusing for students just what the standard curve really is used for. So I want to compare it to the measurement of length and just because people have a lot more experience with that. So length is a great example. If you want to know how long something is, you obviously use a ruler. But have you really thought about what a ruler is? A ruler is an object with standards of length. And you compare this set of standards with the object whose length you want to know. Now again, I realize that this is kind of obvious, but the question then becomes, what kind of ruler should you use? Now, if I want to measure the length of my little penguin earrings, I'm going to use a ruler that is of appropriate length, right? I know this is obvious, but I can't use my little handy-dandy keychain ruler to measure, for example, the length of a car, even this highly penguinized car. Uh, it's just not appropriate. So you have to have a rule. And the rule is that the unknown must be within range of the measuring device you are using. So this really cool ruler is great for measuring a pen, but not so great for measuring a car. And I know this is obvious with length, but when you see how standard curves are used, you'll be amazed how easy it is to violate this rule. So moving away from length now, if you want to know the concentration of whatever in your unknown sample, this is how you do it. So you have a blood sample or a urine sample or a mucus sample from a patient or a penguin or whatever, and we're going to be using a spectrophotometer to measure the concentration of material in that sample. This video is not about that, but I will put a link in the info bar below on a document that I have that explains the principles of spectrophotometers and their use. But basically what's happening is this. We're using light at a very particular wavelength to measure absorbance through a sample. All right, so again, for details on this, go ahead and check out that document. So here are the steps for making your standard curve and finding the concentration of an unknown. You're going to make the standard solutions, then you're going to measure the absorbance of those solutions in the spectrophotometer. Then you're going to make a graph of concentration versus absorbance. That is called the standard curve. Then you're going to measure the absorbance of the unknown that you have, and then you're going to graph it and determine the concentration. So we're going to look at all five steps in an example here. So I make my standard solutions solutions with different concentrations of the material that I am interested in. So I am adding the material to each of, in this case, I just picked five cuvettes. So I know what's in each one, right? Because I made them. I'm going to take each of those vials and I'm going to measure them in the spectrophotometer and I'm going to graph absorbance. So now I have a table of concentration and absorbance for my proteins. And now all I have to do is graph them. And you can do this by eye if you're just doing a, you know, a real quick version of this, or you can enter it into a computer and the computer will tell you the uh, confidence of the line and how well the line, you know, fits your data. Um, but this is basically what you need. The standard curve is actually not a curve. You need to use the portion of the curve that is linear. That is a whole other discussion. But the standard curve is actually a line, okay? And if your data don't make a line, you can't use it. Okay, now this is the standard curve. This is your ruler. So this is the set of standards of known concentration. In other words, you know what the concentration in each tube is, and you know what the absorbance is. And so that's your ruler. 
So now when you have your unknown, this is step four, you take your unknown and you put it in the spectrophotometer and you get the reading. And now you put that reading on the y-axis. So here I just happen to get 0 0.70. Now I put that on the y, I draw straight out a line until it hits my standard curve, and then I draw straight down from there until it hits the x-axis. And that value on the x is the concentration of my unknown. Now I just need to remind you again of that rule that the unknown must fall within the range of the measuring device. I know it seems obvious with a ruler, not so obvious with standard curves. So let's say that my unknown instead of 0 0.70 gave me 1.57. Now I have students who do this all the time. Okay, so they just go ahead and extend the Y axis up like this so they can put that absorbance on there and then they, they draw straight across and they find, uh-oh, I've got to extrapolate that standard curve out and I'm going to just draw. I mean, does this look legal to you? Um, no, you can't do that. Okay, <laughs> so that's what I mean when I say that what it is that you are measuring must fall within the range of the units of measure. So all you would do in this case is make some more standards, right? Standards of higher concentration so that your unknown does fall on the standard curve. That's the solution to that problem. The solution is not extrapolating that line. And that's it. As always, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please show your support by clicking those buttons, like, share, and subscribe. Join me on Facebook, follow on Twitter. Good luck.